Hi guys, Sadika here. Um, if you want to get in touch for a consultation, usually charge about $50 for an hour-long consultation with some adjustment energy work, distance energy work through video chat um, for, did I say for an hour? Yeah. Uh, for the first initial one, you know. And I'm working on some type of subscription service so it'll be easier. That way you get like several consulta consultations and, and activations and things through the, the month. However, if you want to get in uh, touch now, whitesagealchemy at gmail.com, separated by periods, <laughs> white sage alchemy. Um, okay, so one thing that I think doesn't really get talked about enough um, when it comes to energy work is the weird stuff below what we consider the normal chakra system or above it. Other people will call these chakras. I don't necessarily think of them as chakras. Also, I have a problem with the whole chakra thing in general, which I've talked about before, but we can get there. Um, Coyote always talked about this uh, this sort of chakra below the root chakra and I've just had some insights about this stuff recently that I think is poignant so it might be a little esoteric but then pretty much everything I talk about is except for like you know boys and life um, um, <clears throat> so in a seated position regular seat with your feet on the ground sitting in a regular chair you know, uh, the perineum is basically the root chakra, right? Um, and then I find that maybe like a foot below that for me is the chakra below the root chakra. When I'm on the floor, like I am now, on a little cushion, or actually I'm on a little uh, meditation stool, and technically I'm sitting on it wrong. I'm supposed to be sitting like Zazen style knees like this, feet back under the stool, and then this is, the stool becomes a little bit of support. When you're like this, that chakra below the root chakra or below the perineum <clears throat> is in the ground. <laughs> uh, I'm more comfortable with it being in the ground, and if I was to be able to get into the lotus position, it would be even further into the ground. Because I think that's really the point of it. I call it basically the yin gate. And it's this it's this point where... Ugh, it's hard to describe. It's like this point where um, pure potential energy, life force energy, is still unformed and like electrically magnetic. It's, it's weird. <laughs> and... It's not until it gets past that, and then when it gets when it's flowing there. So it, it is like a chakra, and like it, you you put your mind on it, and it will open and stuff. But it doesn't feel like a regular chakra within the body system. It feels more unformed, like almost two dimensional or something like that. And so you get there, and you'll get like <sighs> like rushes sometimes down, and like feel real uh, pinned like this and magnetize to the center of the earth or to the earth or to yin forces and stuff like that and indeed when it is open you can feel some things that are in here that need to release like from up here they'll start to to move down and back into the earth and you want that to happen you want to spend a lot of time there <clears throat> so that the the energy that needs to go back into the earth naturally goes back into the earth and when you do that, when energy goes back into the earth, uh, the earth responds. Because when you fill up yin, eventually it becomes yang, if that makes any sense. Even if you're just filling it up by paying attention to it, paying attention to it, you pay attention, you put enough psychic energy on yin, and eventually it will do something yang. It will, like, birth something yang. And so this energy starts to come up. Uh, through the legs, like like in a sort of spirally up the legs, and I notice that it, to me, I feel like it like it sort of reaches the, the kidneys 
and Ming, Ming Men, which is a, a point between the kidneys before. Don't quote me on this exact path of energetic exchange, but I feel like it gets up there bef before it really gets to the perineum, which is strange, and that the perineum is another junction point. And when that is open, it really allows that potential energy that we were working with just now to become physical energy. And then as it rises up, it can become sexual energy at any of those points before it gets to the navel, the lower Dantian area. Um, and yeah, that's like the mode of it. So this potential energy comes up and I feel like it just connects directly to the kidneys myself. That's what I've been feeling lately. And from to then to the kidneys and that point in between and then maybe like down to the coccyx. I don't know. It's it's strange. Uh, and it sort of feels like the shadow energy or the yin force behind the real vital, succulent, juicy energies of of sex and the body and all that kind of stuff, you know, before it actually starts turning physical and turning into and becoming sexual fluids and, and different things like that. Um, but uh, you could probably follow it up the legs. You don't even need to deal with the legs as long as they're, you know, relaxed and, and, and free and in a good position, you know, that kind of thing. Like, it just happens by itself. So everything down there is sort of like, it's sort of unformed. And when you tap into that, that lower chakra, which I also call the root, and there's this thing that you do in Qigong where you drop a root into the ground, and it's that. It comes like straight off of the... Um, the coccyx in a way like you had a tail but it's like this thing down there and I, I find that connecting to that chakra is the same as dropping a root as long as you're doing it this, the, you know the same type of intention and so when I'm opening that I might get to that really you know magnetized rooted feeling so it's the same thing but you can just intend to drop the root and that will open automatically like it's the same type of thing um, <clears throat> so I find that this stuff is more important uh, than grounding, as it were, although they're related. I find that having this root open and planted into the ground is really the key. Because when it is, and you're aware of that, and you're, you're, you're doing it on purpose, then this energy starts to recycle downward then the earth and those chakras start to respond and give you this <laughs> potential energy that comes into, let's just say it goes up the legs directly to the perineum. I'm not comfortable saying it goes to the kidneys. I think that it has something to do with that, but the kidneys are so much higher that I feel like I'm missing the actual path. So let's just say it goes straight up to the perineum and then starts a conversion process there. You don't have to worry about where it's going in the legs. It just seems to happen automatically because it is a potential energy. Um, and things just kind of like happen. <clears throat> and then when it gets to the perineum, it becomes that, that sexy energy and, you know, vital life force energy and all that good stuff. Um, I feel like having it is more important than grounding. Um, and I feel like it is really the key to rejuvenation. <clears throat> because most, cause see, so here's the thing, uh, a lot of Qigong practices and whatever, they'll, even if they're sit seated, they will have you start down there. So like, here's a way to do it. Straight as a mountain, do all the things, alignments, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> I'm not going to go through them because you should know them by now. And allow the hands to, and, and, and shoulders to drop down this way all the way to the to floor, no matter how you're sitting. And then slowly start to circle your hands around just very gently in a pool of uh, obsidian energy with uh, hues of violet around it. You don't have to visualize it, just try to feel it. It's this weird sort of goop that's down there and it really is potential it's a field of potential energy once you start working with it you start moving it very slowly and you really keep your hands all the way down here you know 
they're almost hitting the floor right now and just moving it around very slowly and allowing that to happen and then you will come up to the lower Dantian area and either you know do this to focus on it focus on the lower Dantian <clears throat> and then you do your practice so they will talk about it and that potential thing that you're doing and below below grounding rooting sometimes they'll have you specifically drop the root if you know how to do that with your intention <clears throat> sit in a certain neutral position or stand in a certain neutral position to make it easier to feel the energetic things that happen to your system when you do intend to drop the root and when you do go in there some some visualization exercises that i've seen in the qigong negong vein <clears throat> are pretend that your hands are stretching all the way down into the very center of the earth and you're feeling that exact same pool that i described earlier of potential energy except that it could you know you could just be in this this blackness in the middle of the earth or something like that and when you do that you use your intention to connect your spirit to connect your energy to something that actually is there then you start to feel all that stuff coming down and you start to feel the root open up and you'll start to feel the perineum area heat up and start to steam a little bit and that's the point um, <clears throat> when you're doing this and you're working with that and my point is that I think that I think it should be explained more and I think that it should be encouraged more because it is everything when you open that stuff up and when you really have that root dropped you start creating tons more jing and then when you have that jing <clears throat> inside of you you have a better store to create chi and when you have a better store of that, you have more chi, then you can create shen, and then reverse the process again, and then you're bringing the energy back down, so that what you're processing in the lower dantian this time is closer to shen, and then you refine it again, and you keep doing that. And that's the entire process of alchemy in a nutshell. You know, you're just spinning these energies um, until they become higher and higher vibrations, more and more refined, more galvanized, however you want to describe it, that's alchemy, right? That's internal alchemy in the in sort of Taoist sense, and also yogic sense, too. Um, uh, yeah, but what I find is that the circulation is typically emphasized, and there's a lot of stuff in between like all the eight things on the back all the way up here are like really difficult spots to get through and there's different breaths for each area you know to really open those uh those i think they're called mansions you know i don't know it's just pockets of energy you know and a lot of them are like really obvious in a physical sense like between the shoulder blades almost everybody has pain or tension between the shoulder blades um, and so that's this really obvious point that you need to open up and expand and allow the energy to like you know run through um, there's all these things in between different breaths to get there and different circulations and when you start to feel a certain quality of energy arise then you're supposed to do different things with it so when you reach a certain state and you're doing these circulations um, eventually you intentionally take the fire of the heart and merge it with the water of the lower Dantian so of the middle Dantian and the lower Dantian and you push this heart fire down there and it's very obvious and this is what alchemy is and this is why they talk about it in terms of physical substances as opposed to energy um, you push this stuff down there and then it starts to react and bubble and do all these weird things and then the this, this steam starts to come up and that, that fire wants to rise but you keep pushing it down with your intention and it does a thing and eventually you'll get to this point where you're having a spiritual orgasm just from pushing these energies around in your stomach. That's how intense and also how simple this stuff is. Um, uh, yeah. <clears throat> So, 
the point is that I think rejuvenation <coughs> is talked about a lot in, in a lot of Taoist texts. At first, it must be the rejuvenation process. And so you're paring down your diet, you're opening things up, you're doing lots of qigong, let's say, or whatever, to just like really get your body back in energetic shape taking certain herbal medicines and potions probably, different things like that. Avoiding certain foods, only having certain foods, whatever. Um, and rejuvenation can mean a lot of things. My point is that working with those low, low, low chakras, the yin gate, dropping the root from the, um, from the coccyx area all the way down there, uh, connecting to the center of the earth, connecting to the center of the galaxy or even to the universe if you want to macrocosm it out, you know, um, is really, really important. And I don't understand exactly why it's not emphasized more. There's this weird uh, feeling, I think, in Taoism that uh, one can get consumed by the yin force. And I, But I also think... Mm, just me, that I'm pretty sure that that is probably, that probably has something to do with a gender bias as well, because typically these sects were male dominated, there were several of them that had, you know, female leaders and, 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 and stuff like that, and, and venerated the female over the male, thinking it was more pure and more spiritual or something like that, um, but most of them were guys, you know, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some weird cultural gender bias going on uh, that made people fearful of the powers of yin, and so it was always different. I, I, I don't know, I don't know, I can't say for sure, I just, that's just my feeling. Um, I don't really see any difficulty with being consumed by a yin force. Um, there are some things that happen sometimes where you do feel that, and it's like, like it's completely draining you, like Kali or a black hole, like sucking everything out of you, you know, and just leaving you this like shriveled up skeleton. But in the spiritual sense, to me, that's good, you know, <laughs> you need to have all this stuff come out of you so that you can be rejuvenated and, and refilled. And that's the point. What I'm saying, when you do work with these these spots and these these uh, areas and or whatever, and then suddenly you go back to your regular thing, I just see and, and feel all this energy just whoosh, you start whoosh up, and it starts to become, you know, more pure and vivified and 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 uh, yeah, rejuvenated. So that I think that stuff needs to be emphasized a little more. I spend a lot of time down there opening that stuff up. Because it's really easy, in a sense, too. It's like, maybe it wasn't so easy before, and so people wouldn't do it. But I find that it's really easy, because when you do open up that chakra, if that's what you want to call it, um, things happen automatically. You know? Once it's opening, it's not like you have to pull energy. You do have to use your mind powers and, and really connect there, and really try to feel that root and where it's coming out, and, and all that stuff play with the different areas and, and feel around, mostly feel, try not to visualize, um, intend that your mind is now in directly in the center of the earth and you have a, a tail or your, your spine is just connecting straight into that center point, you know, and you're just getting all of this potential magnetic energy is just you know, it's it's instantaneous. Is that what it, when I keep saying like it happens without trying or it happens by itself it's also instantaneous it's not like oh it's just it's just there and of course it also relates to the uh, zero point energy or the null point and it relates to um, uh, in some ways the Tai Chi force which is the the spiraling force between the poles and, of course, it relates to my practice of Yi Gong and spontaneous adjustment Qi Gong. So, um, yeah, that's that stuff in a nutshell. I just wanted to talk about it because it's some finer points, I think, towards um, a greater spiritual practice or a greater or a more refined Taoist energetic practice. Um, and, yeah, I will do... 
more stuff on the perineum area. I keep forgetting what it's called in the Chinese term. I don't know why. Um, and what happens when you start pulling energy there? What is Kundalini and why it relates to that same place? But Kundalini is not necessarily an energy. It's sort of what you do with that vital life force energy afterwards. And so it's a specific path. Um, but that also relates to it. Um, and <clears throat> uh, what to do with energy once it gets up to these other points so that it doesn't become overly sexual and get expressed uh, and so that you're pulling it up into the lower Dantian spending enough time with it at the point of the lower Dantian so that it becomes bright and refined because this is the lower Dantian point of the navel back ball is, is like a, a factory you know and it's a really it's a place of, of that the junction of energy you know junction point of energy uh, as that vibrant life force energy has just become physical now it's it's getting converted from that physical and possibly sexual energy into chi which is the energy of emotion and a lot of the mind it has everything to do with the mind you know, the heart mind can't separate anyway I'm starting to get sidetracked so um, yeah what do we do with it after it after we follow that path and after we've opened up all that stuff in the bottom you know um, okay so there's also another point up above here that goes beyond the uh, the crown chakra that could be the exact same discussion I was having about that stuff that we're having it up up, up there <laughs> because at that point it's the yin stuff and the yang stuff and they're non-differentiated at a certain point you get past that and you're just back to the Tao you know okay so 